there, Josh. Right there, there you go. tremendous honor. I never thought this would happen because it's everything that goes into a Disney product is first rate and, and uh, I mean the, the artistry is tip top. So it's an honor to be included. It's a pretty spectacular feeling to be, uh, especially with this group uh, going in. I'm so grateful that John and I are doing it together um, and the late Mr. Jobs who I got to meet on the first Monster movie. But you know, growing up watching the Walt Disney movies as a kid the, the you know if it was old yellow not old yellow it was pinocchio or snow white or you know and and wanting at some point in my life to be jiminy cricket or dopey um but to be you know part of that really part of it now officially with handprints and all of that stuff is pretty spectacular honestly well i think that's the most important thing that the fans around the world for you know in particular our two movies is 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 amazing when you realize that it, it, you know the amount of people who saw it uh and, and love it uh is spectacular so and they're rabid fans and and that's a that's a tremendous feeling that uh, they love really in their hearts what we put out there I think, you know, secret keeping has been a big part of the legacy of this company, and I do feel, particularly in the early days of, um, of Imagineering, as the park was being conceptualized, WED was really this kind of black ops division of the Walt Disney Company. Nobody really knew what they were doing, and that idea of um, uh, building something um, and keeping it veiled until you were ready to show it to someone, that's Showmanship 101. It's why movie theaters used to have curtains. and so. Um, obviously, that's the kind of storytelling that I'm really, I really gravitate to. Uh, it's, it's what gets my heart beating. It's certainly the kind of storytelling that I like to do. Um, and uh, that was really the genesis for kind of the feel that we were going for in Tomorrowland. Well, I think that Tomorrowland really evokes this idea of the future that is much different than the idea of the future that we have now projected out from the year 2013. But that Tomorrowland future is really evocative of the space age, you know, that kind of, uh, that, you know, that right stuff era, for lack of a better word. And so that idea of, of like, kind of like, where's my jetpack? 
um, what happened to that future? Because I'm seeing all the other futures. I'm seeing the robots t taking over and killing everyone. I'm seeing the Hunger Games. You know, I'm seeing Blade Runner. Uh, I'm seeing urban sprawl. I'm seeing environmental disaster. I'm seeing the White House blow up. N any number of versions. Where's my jetpack? And I, I, I do feel like it's it's not the most original idea in the world, but it is actually fresh in the landscape now. And, and most importantly, as, as corny as it is to say, it is really meaningful that Walt the Futurist, this guy who basically in, in a time capsule, uh, you know, 50 years ago, sends a letter to the year 2006, and the last two sentences basically say like, but at, when you're reading this, my hope is that like really there's no war anymore. And, um, and, and you read it and you go, oh man, like I'd love to give this guy that. And that, that became part of the alchemy of the movie, too. I'm BJ Novak. I play Robert Sherman in the movie. I'm here with Jason Schwartzman, who plays my brother Richard Sherman in the movie. Jason, you're also a musician yourself. What yeah. was it like to learn the musical style of another successful musician? Well, um, I appreciate the way you worded that because it implies that I'm a successful musician. Right. And I just want to say thank you for that. Um, but, um, well, for me, I'm you know. I'm going to walk away and text for you. Don't you? Is that yeah, not a problem. I, um, I, I know I can play piano a little, but um, to learn it in Richard Sherman's actual style, I feel like that like, was the most invaluable um, s you know, information for me. Um, and sitting down and like, really just taking like, lessons from him, essentially, music lessons from him at his house, uh, and looking at his hands and seeing how they ran across the piano keys, it was, it was so inspiring. And I feel like just as a musician, I took away, like the movie could have been canceled, shooting could have been canceled like the night before. And I, though I would have been bummed, I also would have felt like, well, at least I got those yep. insane music lessons. <laughs> So um, what was it like for you, BJ, to, to have to imagine um, Bob Sherman, because unfortunately he's not alive, what, 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 how did you, like what were you going off of? What were your main sources of information? Well, I saw the great documentary, The Boys, which I know you saw too, and I got to speak to a lot of people who did know him. But most interestingly was what Richard said about him, and I was wondering before I asked Richard if he was gonna be biased, if he was going to say, well, I wrote all the songs, or, you know, I don't know. I didn't know him at that yeah. point. But he was so um, deeply candid and, and introspective and honest, the kind of way that you can't fake, yeah. that I really came away with a very full picture of who he was and what made him tick and what was special about him and what was, um, what was difficult in his life. It was, it was really cool to talk to Richard about him. He did his brother a lot of justice, I felt. It was amazing. Yeah, it was such a positive feeling, and and you know you could feel the ground rumbling, and it was. It reminds you, you know, what movies are for. It's amazing. Chris is really just such a wonderful person, and and so fun to be around, and um, and obviously an incredible actor. So it's it's easy, and then Tom is wonderful, and also all of the above. I mean, he just has the best personality and is such a great actor. And, and then I got to work with Anthony Hopkins, which was just like, I, I couldn't believe I was in the same room as him. He's just a giant, so. It's exciting, it's a little overwhelming, um, but it's rewarding ultimately, you know, that's, that's part of uh, the treat, working so hard on these movies, knowing that it's gonna be met with such enthusiasm by these fans. I think he's still fish out of water, but it's not so much rooted in his unfamiliarity with technology. It's more about his discourse with the way society is and current political climate. I think Caps always just wanted to be a good guy and do what's right. And I think it's a little bit easier in the 40s to know Nazis are bad. Big Disney fan. We went to Disney World. Disney World is what I grew up with. But I do love Disneyland, you know, it's close, I go a lot. Uh, but Disney World was a big piece of the childhood.
The great thing about the Falcon that I love so much is, you know, he's unlike any other superhero. No one flies the way I fly. No one fights the way I fight. So I think pairing him with Captain America works so well because it's not so much a leading man sidekick relationship. It's a mutual respect tag team relationship. And, you know, he leans on me just as much as I lean on him. So it kind of it worked out to where we actually had a lot of fun shooting this movie. And Chris and I became good friends because, you know, we realized we realize how hard it is to put on a suit every day, a, a superhero suit as an adult and take yourself seriously. So it, it, kinda, it kinda worked out for us. The closest thing I've experienced uh, every day of my life and uh, Comic-Con. Comic-Con was kind of surreal because I, that was my first time. I had never done anything like that before. And, you know, really as an actor, as an artist, you never really get to be in such an appreciative environment. Usually if you're in an environment like that, everyone's there to critique you or judge you in some way, shape or form, say how you should fail. But with this, you have people camping out all night, people buying tickets just to come in and see and support what you've done. So it's kind of extraordinary to be a part of this movie and be able to experience that because I'll probably never be able to experience that again. So I was just soaking it up, having a good time. I grew up watching the Muppets, and it was a it was a really important part of like my, you know, the the forming of my um, uh, silly personality. Um, that that combination of being of of the being silly, but they also were. You know, my parents love to watch it too, and uh, I think this latest iteration from James and Nick Stoller and Jason Siegel on the last one um, is even more balanced. I mean, even more fun for adults as well. I think the humor is really smart. It's still ridiculous, you know, so silly, but just I think it's just genuinely funny. Um, so I, I was just really excited to be a part of it. It's pretty amazing, actually. You know, I, I haven't really ever been a part of of this before. I, I, I'm now because of Modern Family and some other things. I'm, I'm I've done a couple of Disney things, and you get a sense uh, for what it is. But it, it's when you really see the scope of the the following, it's pretty pretty impressive. It is that Disney history that's celebrated, and it's such a treat to be part of that and to get to meet some of the people who I've admired as an audience member or as somebody who's you know gone to the 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 parks etc growing up so to meet some of the people behind that some less well known by the general public but equally as deserving as the familiar faces on the America's Funniest Video Show we end every season by doing something at one of the parks or on a cruise ship or Adventures by Disney, all that. So it's wonderful. It really is uh, very much, as you say, uh, you know, sort of a, a family gathering uh, of, of like minds, you know, people who, who love the increasingly big tent that Disney is. Possible can also climb and descend a set of stairs with smoothness and precision. It is an amazing technological feat. Possible is the world's most advanced step in innovative mobility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Osimo. And for everybody here enjoying D23 Expo this weekend, we have a very special treat. Right behind the rain. 